Growing your own usually means moving to the country, plowing the fields, cultivating the crops, harvesting the bounty for your table. But these days, more people are turning to their own backyards to create urban farms. One Southern California family is at the forefront of that movement. Drivers whizzing past on the 210 freeway through Pasadena have no idea that a stone's throw away from the fast lane is a lush but tiny Eden, a 4,000 square foot farm. It not only feeds a family, but revolutionizes the idea of what can be done in a very unlikely place, the middle of a city. This is city living, but I brought the country to the city. Uh -huh. rather than have to go out to the country. I just imported it. 63-year-old Jules Dervais started this backyard farm 10 years ago. It's a deliberate throwback to the storied days of self-reliant rural America. Jules and his children grow almost all the food they need and everyone pitches in. Five uh, pounds of grapefruit. His daughters, Anise. Well, we have another guy coming to pick up. And Jordan. Yeah, are you done? Okay. And his son, Justin. Their produce is organic, and their animals are, well, friendlier than average. Say hi. Say hi. We have eight, eight chickens, four ducks, and two goats. I joke with people. I said, I think my animals fit better in a city backyard than a lot of um, dogs in the neighborhood. The ducks and chickens lay thousands of eggs a year and keep the bugs in check. And they really uh, made the dynamics of the urban homestead much more sustainable. Sustainable and dense. On their 4,000 square feet, they raise 400 varieties of vegetables, fruits, and edible flowers. 6,000 pounds a year, enough to feed themselves with plenty left over. And with the current passion at high-end restaurants for local pesticide-free produce, chefs are literally beating a path to their door. Hi, how are Hello, you doing? good. How are you doing? So we have your order for today. Oh, wonderful. Sorrel here. Really so what are you going to do with the sorrel? Mm. I'm going to use it to make a really nice um, mm -hmm. relish with, uh, with cucumber for a salmon oh, dish. Nice. The family makes about $20,000 a year from their front porch sales. They use it to buy the crops they can't grow, like wheat, rice, and oats. I would say at the beginning, I didn't really believe I could do it. I, I had some doubts because I kept thinking, this place is too small. There's no way that we're going to be able to feed ourselves. Plus, I never thought we could even grow the vegetables for the, for the market. So how did this experiment in independent living begin? It all began 10 years ago when Jules bought some taco shells for dinner. He learned too late that the shells were being recalled because they had been made by mistake with genetically modified corn. When I thought about putting this food in my children's mouth, and, I, and they were depending on me to give them good stuff, I mean, they'll take whatever their parent, any child would take what a parent hands them. They'll say, it comes from my mom or dad. And I couldn't afford to, to uh, be in that position of giving them bad stuff. Now, a decade later, this radical foodie has succeeded in going off the grid. He calls his lifestyle the path to freedom. And what did family think of that whole approach? Uh, they thought it was strange. <laughs> they thought it was, they thought it was, uh, my daughter wouldn't come out of the front yard and visit with her friends because they said, what's, what's up with your dad? They wanted to know what was going on because I was did, making some radical changes here. The Dervais have no ugly commute. They avoid office politics and will never get fired. But their jobs are way more than nine to five. I need, I need the help, all the help I can get. And it's my family that, like in the old days, the farmer, farmer's family made the difference. Jordan takes care of the animals. Um, a joke for them, we call them pet organic composting machines. Justin is in charge of making sure they get the most out of every square foot of soil. And sometimes the results are extraordinary. You actually grew this? Yeah, it's like a little pumpkin, but it's very long. Just slightly? Slightly. He's also the beekeeper. Oh my gosh, that's the first time I've ever done straight from the honeycomb. Mm. Jules prides himself on his gourmet compost. Oh, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Only worms could love a rotten <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Anise is in charge of cooking the vegetarian meals. All homegrown, strawberries and edible flowers and salad and beets and carrots. 
and the canning. We got grape leaves, pickles, beans, and pickled peppers to, to all sorts of jams, tomato sauce. And the menu? That depends on what's in season. What happens when something's out of season? Uh, we just don't eat it. <laughs> You're out of luck. It's out of season. There are no microwave ovens in this kitchen and no Cuisinarts either. We have you know, gizmos, but they're just hand powered. What little electricity they use is generated by these solar panels. How much is your electricity bill? Well, it's running about the highest $12 a month. $12 <laughs> a month for everything here? Yeah, yeah. They spend even less on gas. This is their biodiesel brewing station. So this is just used grease from restaurants? Yeah, they use it to fry onion rings, french fries, you know, anything you would fry. And you get it free? Yeah, free and delivered on our doorstep. The gasoline station is self-serve. It hasn't always been easy. Justin remembers the year that frost wiped out a crop. Another year, it was a destructive insect. And recently, they've noticed a new challenge, climate change. We call it the forefront of global weirding because we've been gardening for so long, you can sense things are off. Uh, we have this June bug that comes out. It's called June, so it's supposed to come out in June, but it comes out in July and August and, you know, September. So something's definitely off. The other challenge is water. Southern California skies don't deliver enough of it. So Jules keeps the water bill down with this ancient form of irrigation. That's a clay pot irrigation. So it's buried it's, under there. It's buried, um, usually up to the throat here. Uh -huh. And then all you do is fill it up, and the water weeps through the yeah, poor through the skin, clay. through the clay. And uh, you get the water where the plant's needed at the root zone. Plants uh, to take the water as needed. So simple. So just so simple. <laughs> It's 5 o'clock, dinner time, the time when it all pays off. This is going to be inside or outside? Oh, no, it's supposed, it's supposed to be outside. outside. The Dervais are the ultimate locavores. Their food traveled a whole hundred feet from the field to the table. They all say they love urban homesteading and can't imagine living a typical consumer-driven life. But there's one thing they would like. My plans are to uh, have Homesteadville, which is... Uh, What's Homesteadville? Uh, a village of all homesteads to, to start. A, uh, start. With my, my family will be there. They'll have their homesteads. Their extended family will be there. And, and uh, people that want to live this lifestyle will be oh. in there. At the end of the day, some not-so-back-to-nature activity. Visits to their websites have grown dramatically. They get about 6 million hits a month from others interested in this grow-it-yourself revolution. Growing food yourself is, is a, a dangerous act because you're in danger of becoming free. We're all in the same boat on the same planet and there are people now asking uh, deep questions about the future of the planet and they're willing to do this. They're willing to take a risk. It's a risk that has paid off for jewels and is blazing a trail for others.